and we're live. Look up Rug Roast. I don't want to share the link because uh, Max doesn't like that. Elon doesn't like it when we share YouTube links. So, but YouTube's better or worse. It could be worse because you have to see uh, my ugly ass face. Um, but I got a cool hat, so that's good. What's up, 21? Zach, Jake, what's happening, guys? What's going on? Doing good, Matt. I think uh, we're so dead right now. Um, like, we're down bad, <laughs> but not really. So I mean, I my portfolio is actually going up. So, like, the market is, like, you know, slightly ticking along for NFTs anyways. Uh, yeah, for sure. Is the audio coming through on the spaces? Because uh, someone just said no audio for me. Let's see. Can you hear us on spaces? Griffin, give a thumbs up if you can hear me. Yeah, I've got this right here. I can't hear anything either. Oh, man. Double, okay. triple rugged by X today. <laughs> Let's just roast that. I mean, I'm, not as well. <laughs> something is broken, obviously. Maybe um, it's on my end. Testing, testing. Can you hear me? Spaces, can you hear me? No. Nobody can hear me. All right. Uh, well, uh, tell them to get in the YouTube. Just post the YouTube link, and we'll just do it from YouTube. Let's do that. All right. I'm just going to tweet it out then. Whatever, we don't need spaces. Cool. So this is, I don't need to use my phone. We're just going to be all here. Yeah. Okay. It looks as though that's the case. Yeah, he, uh, he tried to make this space three times, and two of the times it wouldn't even allow him to start it. So uh, either his phone is like hacked, uh, Elon hates him, uh, or, you know, X is broken. <laughs> spaces doesn't work. Come Join us here. Uh, that's the wrong link, bro. Uh, so, yeah, you guys can, like, talk about something while I try to learn how to uh, not be a complete boomer. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, what are uh, you guys doing anything for the long weekend? Uh, I'm traveling up to uh my parents house uh, about two miles away uh take my dinner out or take my dad out to dinner for his birthday nice. um, let the grandparents see their grandkids but other than that pretty chill weekend how about you guys making my way out of the city for uh a little bit which would be nice just going upstate to touch some grass uh get out of the city for a little bit which would be nice you guys got beautiful grass over there <laughs> It's green. Can't say that for California. We don't have green grass here. Oh, man. I, uh, I'm originally from California. I remember when I came back after all of the rain, it was Northern California, it was like so green. I forgot it what lasts, it was like. Yeah, it lasts, it, it lasts for like two months, maybe. Like as soon as any kind of heat, like it all just goes away. Damn. It's all Crazy. brown now. It's ugly. I lived on the East Coast for like, uh, you know, five, six years. So. Um, yeah, you guys have a different kind of green out there just because of all the water. For sure. All right, Bern, you ready? Yo, you ready? yeah. We can all start. Right. Um, so, what's up, guys? <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? Good, man. Um, so, yeah, major technical difficulties, but we're good. Uh, YouTube's better anyway. Um, Zach, Jake, thanks for joining us today, guys. Um we spoke earlier this week, um, talked through courtyard.io, and uh, personally, I already like it, but we'll go through it today. Um, but if you each want to kind of give a little bit of background on yourself, like what did you do before NFTs? How did you get into Web3 and crypto, and uh, what have you been doing since? Cool. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll kick it off. Uh, I'm Zach. Uh, I lead marketing at Courtyard. I discovered crypto by accident in 2013. Needed to buy a fake ID. 
uh, and that led me to Bitcoin. And here I am now. So it's a crazy journey to see if, like where it was then and where it is now. Uh, prior to Courtyard, I was at Coinbase for a hot second, uh, working on um, assets, stable coins, and of course, joined as Terra Luna was collapsing. So not the best time to, to be joining. Uh, but then found my way to Courtyard, uh, where we're taking physical assets, real world assets and bringing them on chain, starting off with cards and Pokemon cards and uh, just had a, a crazy drop this week that totally blew our expectations and uh, just sort of, you know, juggling 15 different things all at once right now. So it's uh, it's exciting. Like the energy reminds me of like the the best times of like, I remember when like Rug Radio, you know, we were talking about this earlier, Burn, of like gas was like a hundred bucks to mint like a, a, a rug radio you know pass and i was like I, i'm gonna sit this one out and then the price is like skyrocketing it's like god oh, damn infinite regret right like that, me was, back to those times. that was like when i was trying to get cute when other other deeds was uh launching and like everybody was like oh just floor it at like three eth and you'll be fine and so like i put like 2.2 eth worth of gas and then i left my house to go like out for the night and like I just was scrolling, like refreshing my phone the entire time, and the transactions weren't clearing. And then I ended up not making it. And I was like, "That's just." And thinking back on it now, like people complain about like ten dollars gas, and I'm like, I "Used to live in the world when we were like flooring like <laughs> e multiple ETHs just to win like some assets that you knew would like one hundred to a thousand X in like twenty four hours." I was right there with you that day. Uh, it was painful. I, I, I was, was so mad. I, uh, yeah, I, I wrote it all the way down though. So <laughs> well, painful, I, dude. I, uh, so I was there that night in Discord, like watching it close. It was kind of cool, man. Like heart was racing. Um, and I ran out of ETH for gas. So a couple of friends like loaned me some ETH. And I think I blasted it at like three ETH, just pushed it through, got two of them. I sold one at the Pico top at like 7.2 ETH nice. um, right before reveal from my phone. Uh, so that was pretty dope. And then I rode one all the way down and I sold it yesterday for 0.7, which is fine because I'm going to get a nice tax loss on that. So uh, yeah. I, I got some offsetting to do and then I can roll that into um, – more more preferable assets you know <laughs> the reason i was so mad is because i already knew that i was gonna sell them like so uh, basically it's a loss of like 20 eth like depending on what revealed but i knew i was automatically gonna sell it during like the craze um and so i'm like i just i just threw away like 20 eth because i didn't put enough gas which sucked but it is what it is we all got those stories so yeah, for sure. Nice. That's not even my most painful. That's like that. I don't even know that that makes the top ten, but uh, it's sure. just I remember those days for sure. Um, yeah. yeah, I guess I'll I'll give like some quick background. Uh, I'm Jake. I go by Chef Spin. Um, I I head up community and social at Courtyard. I uh, I used to work at YouTube with our co-founder, and essentially what happened was I sat next to him. Uh, we were always talking about collectibles. I was always on Discord and Twitter when I shouldn't have been. So he left Google, I think about a year before I did, started Courtyard. He needed someone who liked collectibles and liked Discord and liked Twitter. And so he reached out to me and that's that's how that got started. Awesome. Nice, man. Which brings us to Courtyard. Speaking of collectibles, um, so I guess give us the rundown. Like... Like, what is Courtyard? Yeah, man. Courtyard is, is really the easiest way to bring physical collectibles on chain. Um, we're starting off with graded cards. So Pokemon cards, baseball cards, anything that's in a slab. So little plastic sleeve. I'll actually show up this like this. This is a slab right here. So anything that is in this, you'll be able to tokenize. You'll be able to submit it directly through Courtyard. So it uh, goes directly to our Brinks vault. Doesn't cost you anything. You get a prepaid insured shipping label email notifications every step along the way. And as soon as it arrives, you'll get a notification, we'll mint it to your wallet. And then from there, you can do anything you want with it. You can use collateralizing 
protocols. You can list it for sale. You can trade it directly with a friend. Um, and we are constantly trying to find ways to sort of push that digital experience of physical assets as much as we can. We actually were able to do that with drops. So uh, we act, this was the drop that we had earlier this week. Uh, we sold out in, in just minutes. Um, we're planning to do something really soon. Um, but that was a, a huge push for us. It was a, a reminder of what the great days of crypto were like earlier on. At the beginning, we had our Genesis drop. We sold 800 cards. These were more premium cards. Uh, so about $500,000 worth of cards in, I believe, like 10 minutes at the peak of the the, the run. Um, so now we're bringing that back. We know how much fun people had with it. And we're really trying to find a way to make, make the best collecting experience for folks to truly own these assets, right? Not just have it on eBay or anything like that. True ownership. Choose where you want to list it for sale. Choose how you want to interact with it. Um, and that's our core ethos. Is how can we empower collectors? How can we make sure we're not, you know, nickel and diming folks? We made a few improvements to the platform to really onboard the masses, right? Like that's what we see as like the next wave of Web3. So for folks that sign up, they'll have an embedded wallet instantly created for them without even needing to create a wallet. But for the Web3 power users and the DGENs out there, you could always link your external wallet and use that as your primary wallet the entire time. Um, and then on Courtyard, one of the exciting things as well is like there's no gas fees. So we subsidize and pay for gas fees. So the user isn't even seeing any of that. So usually to list something, it costs gas to transfer, to remove a listing. Those are all little obnoxious fees here and there. You won't even see that on Courtyard because of the great work our engineering team has done. Um, I guess getting a little bit into the weeds, we use Privy, Gelato, Reservoir. It's sort of these, these incredible partners that have been able to make this possible. Uh, so we're just getting started. Cards is just the tip of the iceberg. Um, and the reception has been incredible. Man, this is so cool. Yeah, like right out the gate, you have me with like Poke Pokemon cards, right? Because that that's definitely my childhood. Um, I'm not a huge collector of cards or trader of cards. So forgive my ignorance. And maybe people in the audience would have kind of the same question. But one thing that I got super excited about was the fact that You've basically hidden the Web3 technology behind a Web2 interface, which I think is great for onboarding the masses, right? People don't want to pay these fees to list or to transfer or to sell something. Um, they don't want to have to create a wallet because they don't understand it. They don't know how to keep it safe. And all they hear about is, you know, you can get hacked and stuff like that, right? So taking all of that away, it, it's, it almost operates like a Web2 like trading you know, platform uh, for collectibles. Um, and so I'm kind of wondering how you kind of go about educating your audience that comes from the Web2 space about the, the Web3 technology that's behind it. I do believe that onboarding masses is much like the internet. Like people usually do not know how internet infrastructure works, but they use it every day of their lives. And that's the same thing that we're going to need for kind of like Web3 to, to take off. Um, but you know, the web three nerd in me all, always likes to see like the platforms are, are trying to educate a little bit. Um, and then two, like, how would you say that your platform, uh, is diversified from maybe other platforms out there in the market? If they exist, I don't know. I'm sure they do that also sell collectibles, uh, online. Yeah. So I'll, I'll speak on the education one. Um, we've been really fortunate to spend time at a lot of awesome card conferences all throughout uh, the US. So uh, Mint Collective is a huge card collecting conference in Las Vegas. We had an awesome booth there and we're able to talk with folks that, you know, couldn't care less about Web3, right? And like the worst time too, right? People right. were like, oh, this is JPEGs. It's a joke. Like we were coming in at a time where people were really not willing to even have the conversation but people were having the conversations with us wow you guys are doing something really interesting and different and new this concept of actually owning something and not being locked into a marketplace is the thing that sort of comes to the top over and over um so where we spend the most of our time educating is like on the ground like boots on the ground talking with people and finding as many ways for us to understand like what is the most important thing for them I love Web3 just as much as you guys do. I love the sort of the auto the sort of autonomy of actually owning, you know, those assets. Um, so being able to talk with folks in person, answer those questions um, is really, really valuable. And being able to share a little bit about that, a sort of 
streamlined version for them where they don't even need to have the wall. It really, really resonates. Um, and at the end of the day, it's like with these folks, we care about like, oh, it's like we're ETH maxis or we're this maxis or we care and we love these technologies. A lot of other folks that we're trying to bring on board just want to have a fun and awesome collecting experience and really just care about the value that they receive. So we're focused, you know, again, I love Ethereum. I love it just as much as the next person, but they don't care about that, right? They just care about an awesome collecting experience. And we're just trying to figure out ways how to improve that. Um, your second question about how we differentiate from other marketplaces. So I think the first is like the gasless transactions, right? So we're only able to do this on our website because that's technically how it works. So on other marketplaces like OpenSea, Blur, there's other creative solutions as to how they're able to go around that. However, on Courtyard, um, that's one of the rare instances where you won't have any gas fees. And then just comparing this to like the regular Web2 like marketplaces, the fees to sell and buy are, are ludicrous, right? They're absolutely astronomical. So how we are trying to differentiate ourselves is like, we're not your average marketplace, right? And that's how we talk to Web2 folks. This thing is inherently a little bit different. We don't need to get into the weeds about it being like the blockchain and the NFT, this, that, the other, but we're able to really show them uh, the exciting things of the value. Yeah, I think that's really smart. Um, uh, I think NFTs have a really bad rap and uh, people have kind of exited because there isn't a lot of fun to be had unless you really know what you're doing um, in this kind of market. So to focus directly on having fun first and simplifying for the user, I think it's a really great direction to go in. Yeah, have you guys... Um... Have you targeted like card shops and things like that to get them involved here with uh, buying, selling, trading, etc.? Uh, definitely. I mean, those are those are the folks that we want to be able to onboard, and we we sort of want to demonstrate how powerful Courtyard is, and be able to go to them and say, "Hey, here's an opportunity for you for a new revenue stream." I'll actually hand it off to Chef. He was actually just at a card shop the other day. Um, I mean, that's where we get the most valuable feedback. Like th these are the people, those are the hearts and minds that we eventually need to win over. Um, so it's so critical for us to, to have this conversation, but Jeff, I'll hand it over to you. Yeah. Yeah. I had the chance to go to a card shop near me in uh, Seattle yesterday. Uh, it worked out super well that the, one of the owners of the shop is heavy into crypto trading coins every day. So it was just like a natural conversation about what we're doing. Um, I think the one, one of the things that really appeals to shops is, you know, we, because we're on chain, we're able to add the 1% kind of passive income. So when someone vaults and tokenizes a card with us, they are the originator, like the curator of that card. And we want to reward curation. So as the card continues to trade on chain, they continue to get a percent of the sale. And so for card shops, that's always something that, I think they're they're interested in you know how can they if they have a great card and they they sell it you know if they sell it to someone in person it's just kind of like they take the money and then that's it but they look at this as maybe a way to sustain have a secondary you know source of income um, and yeah I mean the, I think another thing they like is like the 3D models it's I think all all shops want uh, a cool way to stand out everyone's trying to take like pictures of their cars in interesting ways, different backgrounds. That's pretty common in the, the card industry. So when we show them the 3d models and what we can do with that, uh, that's another thing they definitely get excited about. Yeah. That's awesome. What's the total, if there's a 1% royalty from, from the beginning, what's kind of the total uh, structure of like the sale? Yeah. So uh, Jake, okay. you, you, up to, you want to take it? Yeah, go for it. Cool. Um, so they're they're technically not royalties. They're it's revenue share, just for sort of legal purposes, right? Um, but the the way that it works is that um, so courtyard how we're able to pay for the vault right at Brinks, um, and how we're able to pay for shipping and all of that is by taking the cut of the transactions, right? No different than another marketplace like eBay. The difference is that the fees are not offensive, right? It's not a 14, 18 percent, you know, uh, chopping off the top. So the way that it works is that 1% of that is going back to the person who curated it. So that means that every single time that card is retraded, you're getting 1% over and over and over. Courtyard will get 5%. You know, we share some of that with Brinks because they're our partner and investor in it. But really, you know, we're, that's coming out of, 
you know, our bottom line back to the community. And I think that's like a core, like what I love about Web3 and the ethos of it is just like giving back, passing the value along. And that's something that a lot of these bigger marketplaces don't even see the need to because they're there, right? And we need to do something different to really show how it should be done. They're not going to concede any of that until we show them that it's a better way to do it. And that yeah. bringing on collectors who love what they collect and rewarding them is a better way than anything else. I think it's an interesting value prop because obviously other marketplaces in the space have said royalties to zero, right? And like, um, but people using your platform actually get something for the fees that they're paying, right? So they get to be able to trade these assets very securely um, and they're getting the image of their asset created uh, and all of the fees for operating on the platform, like listing and, and selling and stuff like that there's no gas fees, right? So like you're actually giving something back of tangible value to operate on your platform while also taking that fee on the back end once a sale is made. I think it's pretty smart because a, a lot of other platforms, they don't have anything tangible to give you other than they exist, right? And they have traffic. Um, but I think this is a great way to kind of provide balance in a scenario where fees are going to be taken on a sale as a percentage of of whatever's being sold. So um, yeah, kudos to you for kind of thinking outside the box and actually giving some people value before you actually charge them money. Yeah, appreciate it, man. I, one thing I completely forgot too, is like, <laughs> so our team is shipping like crazy. You can purchase with Apple Pay and Google Pay now. So you can literally not even need to add any crypto and buy something on the blockchain, which That's is cool. so, so cool. And actually for the drop that we had, the majority of people, and these are crypto natives, decided to purchase the drop with a credit card just because of how easy it was. Maybe they want to continue to stack their crypto and just, you know, hey, get those credit card points. But that was a really cool thing for us to see. That's actually that's actually a really good point. I tried to buy some. I'm trying to buy something right now off of Nifty Gateway because I just want to pay cash for it. I don't want to touch my ETH. So um, I'm trying to get somebody to transfer it off of OpenSea to Nifty Gateway so I can do so because... For whatever reason, like I cannot use the OpenSea authentication for like a credit card. It doesn't work. Like I don't I don't know anybody who's actually able to get it to work. Um so the fact that you've integrated with something like Apple Pay and Google Pay, that's that's awesome. Anything that can just um kind of slide in with what people are already used to using, uh, I think are great initiatives and people like spend their entire lives just paying with Apple Pay off of their phone. Yep. It's it's so easy, right? And you get that satisfying little ding at the end. Like, how could you not pay, you know? Yeah, I like it. Yeah, so say I'm like, I'm a normie and I'm, I I find your site and I'm like, oh, cool. I want to get this uh, Pikachu card or whatever. Um, or that Magic Johnson one I was looking at. I'm a Michigan State fan, so I'm a huge Magic fan. Um, but say I want, I want to buy that and I use Apple Pay. So... At the time I purchased, does it simultaneously like create a wallet in the background and then it's in my wallet and that's it? Yeah. So at the moment you create an account, a wallet is instantly created for you. So there's no wallet. You know, you're not a user. You go into courtyard, you click sign in. The moment you click sign in, you're, you're, you get a wallet. So we're using Privy.io. You can't shout these guys out enough. They're they're absolutely fantastic. They're also the folks behind the seamless onboarding for FriendTech. So if anyone's gone through that, there it's their uh, Privy is the auth and sort of sign in provider there. Um, so wallets create the moment you sign in. You don't need to do anything outside of that. You see the card you want. You can purchase it directly with Apple Pay. That will, or Google Pay on your phone. It will instantly go through uh, to like purchase the NFT of it, right? Um, and that is an on-chain action. We're using paper.xyz for, for that as well. Um, again, shouting out all these partners who are able to like bring the entire space forward. And then it arrives in your wallet shortly thereafter. Um, an instant ownership, right? Like that doesn't exist on eBay or any of those marketplaces. You have to wait for it to arrive. You have to wait for it to authenticate. You have to wait for all those little things, like a lot of equipment, whatever. Instant transfer of ownership um, anywhere in the world. And then folks can redeem it anywhere around the world as well. So we had folks in uh, the UK, folks in uh, East Asia, all purchase cards. Um, at one point in time, trade them around a little bit and then be able to redeem them. So really cool to see that. Nice. So, so, uh, okay. So a card gets sold. The physical card is in, let's say Chicago, right? And I live in Taiwan. 
So once it's purchased, you guys just like put it in a mailer and ship it out or Brinks ships it out and easy as yeah, that. So, so it stays in the Brinks vault. Our vault's in Utah um, and we have access to Brinks entire network. So, you know, Courtyard, we have big ambitions to be, you know, have vaults all around the world. But for the time being, this vault in Utah is, is perfect for the cars that we have. It's so cool to see like these gold bullions next to like a Charizard. Like it's just, it's so funny to see that. Um, but the card stays in the vault. There's no need for the card to remove the vault unless that person actually wants to hold it in their hands. So you can trade and transfer it and buy it a million times over without it needing to leave the vault. It's funny, we talked about like the environmental impact that we're solving here as well, right? Like less shipments, right? Like less things moving around. All you need to do is prove ownership. Um, and then for the folks that really need to redeem it, they're able to pull it out at that point. At that point, they would just need to fill out a request. Um, and there's no sales tax on any of this, right? So you don't need to pay sales tax on any of these trades until you actually redeem it. Um, so just another reason to keep it on chain, right? More liquid, you're not paying for taxes. You don't need to worry about any of the sort of inconveniences of the shipping experiences that folks deal with today. Nice. So if they do redeem it, do they pay shipping or do you guys pay shipping? Yep. So if they redeem it, they'll, they're will responsible for paying shipping. Um, we're not charging, you know, we're, at that cost, right? So we're not making any money on the shipment out. Um, it's just for like the cost of, of what it is to operate that. And then of course, like international things, right? That are out of our control, customs, things like that. You can't avoid that. That's just the nature of shipping. Yeah, for sure. I, I know that all too well. I used to work at, um, at Big Brown for like 13 years. So in international. So um, yeah, very familiar with the duties and taxes and customs and dealing with all that. Um, but I think with a lot of these cards, that wouldn't be a huge issue because they're lightweight. Um, you know, the shipping wouldn't be bad. But like you said, uh, why not just leave them on chain? I mean, you have proof that you own it. It's in your collection. Um, have you guys looked at a way to, like, I guess add a social aspect on here? Or I, I know you kind of want to keep it like a marketplace, but have like a social aspect of a way where people can flex their collections. Yeah. Uh, we – so – First of all, I would say, like, you know, we started out, um, you know, in, in the heyday of, of like Discord communities. Uh, we were all about bringing collectors in from all different, you know, backgrounds. Like, I love sneakers. Like, there's, there's, there's people in the Discord from, from all over. Um, and so, in the last like year that we've been doing this, like, we've continued to cultivate that community and bring people in who are able to, to, you know, share with one another. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, we're we on flexing on Odd Cyber. So what we've been leaning into lately is like the live stream, live break, live breaks are blowing up. Like people love doing that on Twitch. Um, just like paying, you know, to to get in on a one card from like a ten card pack or something. Be friends does that a lot with their community. Um, so we've been in different ways, kind of like participating more in that aspect of it. Uh, last night, for example, yesterday. We had two streams. We went in the Polygon Discord and ripped like four or five packs with people. And we got to see their reactions live right then and there. Like some people rip chase cards, some people rip like decent cards. And that builds community. And that's like, you know, great for sharing and great for like getting to know each other. Um, and we did that on Twitch later in the day too with a, a VFriend streamer, Josh Hurge. Um, but as far as like the, the site goes and, and adding social aspects to it, it's still so brand new. We, you know, we're, we're, we put so much effort and, you know, the whole team into getting these features live to just make it accessible. Because first and foremost, if we want to have a shot at someone who's a lifelong card collector who knows nothing about Web3 to come in and have a good experience, it has to be smooth and buttery and like, and, and that was the most important thing. Now that that foundation is there, um, me is at, from the community side, 100% want to see more of like a social element. I think a big part of collecting is storytelling. It's like, who am I as a collector? What are my priorities? What am I proud of? And what does this specific collectible mean to me? So I think there's there, you know tons of opportunity to add that stuff. And we want to be thoughtful about what we do. Like the last thing we want is uh, I, I'm not trying to knock anyone, but like, uh, you know, I think when Coinbase NFT launched, it was kind of like this funny thing where like they added comments to the collection and then no one was really commenting. And it's, you know, well, why do you have that feature if people aren't using it? So so we definitely want to be mindful of stuff like that. But 
we, yeah, giving people a chance to like tell who they are as a collector and share what it means to them, I think is, is a next step for us for sure. Yeah, that makes sense. And you don't want to uh, throw the baby out with the bath water, I guess, um, as the saying goes, right? So if you try to, you want to keep it web to feel right for sure. And if you try to like add in all this community shit on the website, um, it just gets a little, uh, a little sloppy, you know? Um, but you know, it could be something you do on the side. You have another site where people can like flex or something like that. Or Yeah. I mean, um, that's what's so cool about this, right? It's like, build it like anyone can build it and anyone can have it in their their platform right like if you really just want to be open c dgen you could be open D, open c dgen and buy cars on open c you don't you don't need to go on courtyard if you want to have a more seamless gasless transaction experience you do that on courtyard if you want to do x y and z and you're like oh courtyard isn't building this fast enough i want to build it myself it's the beauty of the blockchain right and that's what we're betting on is that collectively building this experience and and the the future of what i perceive as like the web we're able to get value to people so much faster because of the collective building mentality that everyone shared yeah absolutely the beauty of web3 um mp has a question for you fractionalized ownership in cars that are high value is that possible it's a good question it's something that we're staying away from mostly due to the regulatory landscape of things. We're really focused on bringing these assets on chain, making it awesome and liquid for them to be able to have those experiences. But again, the beauty of the blockchain, right? If there's a protocol, if there's a platform that allows for that and someone wants to take that off and do it with that, more power to them. Um, so that is, that is certainly an option um, outside of Courtyard, uh, you know, proper. Yeah, so that's built, and they were on the show a couple weeks ago. Um, <laughs> Lore.xyz. So um, they were another another guest with a really cool platform that we really like, where Good communities can you know build collective buying power essentially and vote on what you do. Um, so MP, I would check them out, and if you you know it might be cool to build a group around uh, card collecting. So you work with Lore to build out that group and then you go on Courtyard and you can acquire cool cards, not financial advice, but something Very you can awesome. do. Is, is someone in Lore <laughs> listening right now? I don't know. Uh, probably Lore. not because Twitter rugged. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I can. Uh, I'll. I'll probably, uh, I'll share this with them. Um, well, well, yeah, definitely. Uh, these are the, t like, we love these conversations. So if you're listening, let's, let's chat. <laughs> Hit me up, boys. I'll connect you. Uh, they're they're good people. Another super smart team, like very well experienced with very strong resumes. So their website's you know, super cool. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really clean. Um, I like what they're doing there as well. Um, yeah, good question though, MP. And uh, you know, hit me up on the side if you want any help connecting on any of that. But Laura X Y Z, build your stuff and then go to Courtyard. Good to go, man. Um, yeah, I was going to rip a, I was going to get a pack the other day and I missed it. I was, I was like, I think working out at my land or something. And like I saw, I, I set up the notifications. I saw the drop come through and I was like, ah, oh, shit. So it blew. like we were all like maybe doing double takes. Like did that really just happen? Um, it was crazy. Yeah. How fast did you guys sell out? So we sold out, so we saved five cards uh, for giveaways for like folks in the community and, and wanted to like give back there. Uh, but we sold 70 cards in under three minutes. Um, yeah. And the majority of them were through a credit card transaction. So um, we're planning on doing a lot more drops in the future um, and, and doing things. So, you know, I would say like for those who are listening and, and want to participate, if you go to Courtyard and enter your email, there's like drop alerts. You'll get notified through that. And then alternatively, Twitter, right? We're constantly posting there. Um, and if you turn on notifications there, that's probably another good place for you to be the first. But um, yeah, it's, it's such a weird market right now, right? Like it's, it's so difficult to like sell out projects. We also weren't really sure what to expect. And we wanted to go in with like, you know, not a crazy size drop, but something really meaningful that brought us back to like why we were all doing this. Um, and just based off of this insane demand, we, you know, we're, we're going to try to deliver and give the people what they want. Do you have a trade function? There is, so like the, like the deals function, like, uh, like OpenSea? 
Yeah, because I, I mean, trading cards, dude. I, I remember sitting with my buddies with basketball cards, like, hey, I'll give you two of these for this one. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, that's such like a logical progression, right? Like that, that just makes sense. Um, not something, you know, I think that the feature, it's like a non trivial feature to build, and it took OpenSea quite some time to actually get to a point where they supported that. So I think we're going to, we're going to look and see like, what is possible on OpenSea as it pertains to like our cards. Definitely something that like gets me excited. Now we're just like inundated with so much feedback, positive construction, all these amazing ideas coming out from the community. Now it's just like, how do we prioritize? How do we make sure we're delivering like what the people want? Uh, but yeah, I would love to be able to like trade a Charizard for like, you know, a first edition, you know, Bulbasaur, you know, a shadowless Bulbasaur. Like that would be a really cool thing to show. And just like that is like the fun, right? Like how else are you able to have that fun? You can't do that on eBay. You can't do that on other marketplaces. Um, so the technology unlocks some really cool use cases. Yeah, there's there's a, an absolute ton you can do. And then my last question was, how's how's uh, traffic looking? I mean, obviously you're, you're probably not encumbered by um the dead nft market like nft projects are because you are um you appeal to the masses a lot more um uh, but i guess my question is how does that traffic look for you guys how's how's growth looking month over month and year over year yeah so i can i can't share specific numbers but i can say within the last two months we've tripled our user base um Ooh. Yeah. Um, so that we were still sort of reeling from the demand from the initial launch a couple of weeks back. And then every drop that we have continues just to like do another bump and another bump. So we're super excited. We have a long ways to go. This is just like the beginning. But um, yeah, man, it's a lot of a lot coming on drinking water out of a fire hydrant for sure. That's awesome, man. I love to hear it. Um, it um, are you taking on investors? I've got like three dollars and seventy five cents. Um, <laughs> that's uh, yeah, you guys are crushing it, man. Um, and I, I just see this being absolutely huge. It's it's like the dream use case of of the technology that we have in front of us, the Web three technology, and it's it's doing it in a non shilly way, you know, without all the speculation. It's just a a really useful use of uh of the technology this is definitely by far one of the coolest uh platforms i've seen i've got a question yeah. for for you guys like what like you know before you got into you know flipping jpegs like what did you use to collect you know what were like those things that got you really excited as a kid for me uh basketball cards i was heavy and i've got like a tim duncan uh chrome rookie psa 10 I think that's like my grail. I've got like Peyton Manning rookie cards that are like 9.5, 10s, like some good ones. Uh, so football and basketball cards back in the day. Um, and then I've got a really cool, like a Michigan State football program from the game of the century. That was 1965 Rose Bowl. Uh, Michigan State and Notre Dame were undefeated. And they played each other for the championship game. And back then you could end in a tie. So it, it tied 10 to 10. Wow. Uh, yeah, but my, my stepdad actually played in that game for Michigan State, and I've got a program that's, like, signed by a bunch of the players. Um, I don't think I got Bubba Smith, but I got Charles Webster, who was, like, like one of the best wide receivers back then, like, absolute beast. Um, so that's, like, my grail collectible. But, like, yeah, sports stuff, I I'm, I've always loved collecting, like, sports stuff. And now um, – primarily wrecked guys <laughs> yeah so i think uh when i was a kid I, I was really big into collecting like comic books um so like the original spider-man series and stuff like that um and x-men um as i got a little bit older i started collecting like signed football jerseys um so i have a bunch of signed football jerseys and then when i after i you know turned 21 um i started collecting crown so crown royal has a bunch of like rare whiskeys from like burnt down distilleries and stuff they don't make anymore and stuff that were only sold in certain markets. So I have tons and tons and tons of unopened crown that I, that I still collect to this day. Loxley could talk to you about that. He's got, I don't know if you, he's ever mentioned to you, but Loxley, our CEO at rug radio has a whiskey collection that would just like, I mean, it's, it's worth more than my net worth. So um, <laughs> <laughs> it's insane, but uh, yeah, man. Yeah, there's a lot that means there's a lot you guys could get into right 
you do sure. any of that. There's um, I'm blanking on the name. There's an alcohol based real world asset. You know, I'm blanking block on the bar. name. I think it's uh, Block Bar. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. So they're doing some cool stuff there. I mean, that that's a whole separate sort of regulatory landscape oh, yeah, sure. to navigate. So way different, um, way way different. Back Baxis as well, I believe, is another one. Um, and it's just, I mean, this is the stuff that gets me so excited, right? People are just trying to find. Like they, we know the technology is inherently better for this, and how can we use a, a good application, alcohol, a collectible, you know, desirable alcohol uh, beverage? So it's cool to see how that works. But yeah, prob- we'll stay away from that. Comics might be something we explore. Uh, makes a lot of sense for, as a next sort of category. But cards is um, cards is where we're gonna stay for a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's a huge market, right? Like, there's really not a, a big reason to diversify as long as you bring on more and more different types of card communities right um one of the things i had questions on is you know say i i buy this grail it's sh- i redeem it it's shipped to me i still have this kind of digital nft on your platform can i withdraw that to like my own wallet so good good question so every nft that you see is representative of an exact physical card so you can't have one or the other. It's uh, you can only have one or the other exactly. So we burn it before we send it back. So there's no way you're buying something that doesn't have that physical asset back behind it. Sure. No, that that's actually really smart. But, but yeah, you were like, oh, it's so beautiful. Like the, the I know Apple. it's it's a three D. Like I'd I'd want to keep that. And like if I own the physical piece, I'm like, let me put it in my on cyber gallery and like you know show it off. Right click, save it, dude. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that 3D uh, 3D imaging is uh, it's clean, super clean. I love yeah, it. Yeah, maybe you guys should include that, like the just the video, and like uh, uh, when somebody claims it, like here's the video of the 3D. So if you ever want to show it to anybody, like you have that. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, just a downloadable file. Yeah, for sure. Well, I was waiting for the rose, man. I'm trying to like, I'm trying. I was like, uh, we're, for the we're, we're so friendly on here, especially <laughs> if you have a legitimate product. Like we've, we've reviewed some that like me and burn are like, nah, this isn't going to really go very well. But um, yeah, you guys show up here with a, a legitimate working product that solves a, a need and like is furthering web three. You're not really going to find uh, a kind of negative tone from either one of us. I don't think we appreciate yeah. it. Guys. Yeah, I guess we can rate you. Um, I'm going to give you a 8.99, which is super high, but it's not a 10 because I can't speculate or gamble on it. Um, so, I mean, uh, when's the token airdrop, boys? Speaking no, of regulations. <laughs> no, no token airdrop um, anytime soon. But we're always looking at ways to make it just like more fun and, and reward folks who, you know, are, are bringing cards on chain, who are making trades. Um, so definitely something to keep an eye out on over the next several months. Nice. Yeah, rewarding is good. And that, yeah, I, I like how you're staying away from the shilly, greasy Web3 shit. So it's good. Um, just because me and Burn always do this, I'm going to give you an 8.99969. Just because I really like the fact that you're entering a market that is already well established in physical collectibles, right? And you're bringing the technology to a group of people and to an industry that it really will benefit. Um, But you're doing it in a way that is still fun. It's still super user-friendly. Um, people can use it and not even know that they're u- it's backed by Web3 or blockchain technology. Um, the onboarding seems to be fabulous. They don't even know. They don't have to create a wallet. They don't pay any you know gas fees. You can buy with Apple Pay and credit card. Like you've ca- kind of you've checked all the boxes of like let's make this as easy for somebody to use our platform as possible. And I think that is the way you onboard to the masses. And I think it's the way that you push the industry forward, not Web3 specifically, but the trading collectible physical community that you're working in. Like all these conferences that you're going to and spreading the word, like people will take notice if you are successful with what you're doing. And you could revolutionize that industry and kind of drag it into the kind of the Web3 space, which I think is the future. So I think what you guys have is great. 
Um, I love the packs. Uh, I'm like Burn. I'm a DJ and I like to gamble. So you guys have taken that out, which I think is really smart from a business perspective um, because that's where a lot of people get into trouble. So yeah, great, great product, guys. I really think uh, what you build is uh, really cool. And I love the 3D rendering of the actual physical uh, object. I think that's an amazing way to, uh, to sell stuff um, and to be able to look at it while it's online. I feel like I should mention something that may, maybe this will bring it to like give us an extra point one. So when the drop sells out, we, what we've been doing now is like, for example, with the drop this week sells out, there's a 24 hour window. No one's allowed to rip their packs. All the packs stay sealed. And then after that 24 hour window, people can start to rip and you know all the list of what cards you could get. So people were kind of doing the math. Okay, like I know there's X Chase card in there. Hasn't been ripped yet. There's 20 packs left. What are the odds? Should I do it? Because you could buy those sealed packs on secondary um, just while there's like then 24 hours after then all of them auto reveal because we don't want to keep that going forever. We don't want someone to completely you know go away and then there's just a sealed pack forever. So um, no, th thank you for that. And But uh just, just had to get that in there because you guys can get that degen on for a 24 hour period. Yeah, I mean, there's still a little bit of a degen element, though. I mean, you're ripping a pack. You're, you're getting, um, you know, you're gambling a little bit on what you're gonna get, which uh, that's still valuable. I, I miss the days when we could reveal NFTs and, and they were worth something. So, uh, this is another way to play that game, which I love. It's, uh, it's a funny thing, right? Like the communities aren't all that different. There's JPEG collectors and there's cardboard collectors, right? Like we're all collecting things. And at the end of the day, it's like the story and the memories associated with those objects. Um, definitely in some cases, speculation, right? Of, oh, it can go up or, you know, and that's that's the case with cards. Um, it's it's fascinating. It's it, the secondary market on card collecting is a multi-billion dollar industry, which for someone on the street, they'd be like, oh, maybe like a million dollars or a couple million. It's a massive, massive market. Um, so we're excited to see how we can push it forward and um, bring our, you know, our Web3 community along for the ride and, you know, start to expand into other communities as well. Love it, man. Long term, what's the goal? Get acquired or just keep growing? Long term, I mean, we want to be the destination for collectibles, right? I mean, I think there's so many conversations that can happen um, and I mean, the mark, you know, the, we're at the whims of the market as well, right? It, depending on what, it depends what wave we can catch and ride, right? And like, there's so much of, of a project success is like execution and working hard. But if there's no wave for you to ride, um, it's, it's difficult for you to get that momentum and bring people along. So um, we really want to take collectible objects, uh, real world assets, and show folks how valuable they are and how much more liquid they can be and how much better it is to have that true ownership. So really the sky's the limit. Anything of any asset of value that benefits from a liquid marketplace, um, we see an opportunity for Courtyard. Love it, man. Cool. I don't have anything else. Well, guys, well, this was fun. Um, I guess for those who are listening and both of you as well, like, we want feedback. We want the ugly feedback. We want like the, the, oh, this was like a frustrating experience feedback. So we want to build with the community as much as we can. So if anyone's listening to this, feel free to DM myself or, or, uh, or chef or jump into our discord. Um, we're building this with the community. Um, and we want to make sure that it's something that everyone just, uh, has a great time with. Love it, man. Good stuff. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming on. Um, big fan. I got to get in on the next drop and not miss it next time. So I'll be watching. <laughs> might be coming sooner, sooner than folks might think. So uh, I guess that's the alpha I'll share. Good, man. I'm going to watch. I'm going to try. I'm going to give it a shot. Hopefully I'm able to be at my computer and get it. So, <laughs> um, all right. I'll play us out. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Have a great weekend. Yeah, thanks, guys. This guy's so, so we just sit here awkwardly in place. Yeah, we, uh, we talked about the music. So. Uh, for everybody that's involved in Rock Radio and the R Town, make sure you go vote. We got two polls up there this weekend. Vote. R Now. I yelled vote. at Fern because he wasn't going to vote. 21's blowing me up in the DMs. Vote. And broadcast.